Hey guys, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. Welcome to another tutorial on Gaussian Elimination. So to do this tutorial, hopefully you would already have some experience with Gaussian Elimination. It's not designed for people who have never seen Gaussian before. So have a look at my other tutorials on Gaussian Elimination before you look at this one. So we want to find the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix. Okay, so let this matrix be A. A equals 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 1, 0, 2, 4. And we want to know what the inverse of A is. Now, what is the point of the inverse of A? Well, we know that when matrix A is multiplied by its inverse, we will get the identity matrix. Okay, so if we write this out, we have matrix A multiplied by the inverse of A will equal the identity matrix. So, how do we find out the inverse of A? Well, that's what Gaussian elimination is designed to do. Okay, if we know that we have a matrix multiplied by another matrix that will give us a resulting matrix we can put it in the in an augmented matrix and we put the first matrix on the left and then we've put this the last matrix on the right and the matrix in the middle that's missing um, is not part of the aug augmented matrix but we know that as long as we follow Gaussian elimination we can then rewrite the augmented matrix back into the original form and whatever is on the left hand side of the augmented matrix multiply by the missing matrix which is A inverse will give us the matrix on the right okay as long as we follow Gaussian elimination rules to simplify um, the matrices and we want to get it down to we want to do Gaussian elimination okay so I'll just simplify the whole process first to show you what we want to happen in the end so we're going to use Gaussian elimination so we end up with the left hand side to equal the identity matrix and the right hand side to equal I have no idea what it's going to be at the moment so I'm just going to write down some letters so that if we rewrite this into the original form before we put it in the aug augmented matrix the left hand side multiplied by the inverse will equal the right hand side which means the right hand side this matrix here is going to be equal to the inverse right because the identity matrix multiplied by the inverse just equals the inverse that's the whole point of an identity matrix so what we want to do now is use Gaussian elimination to get to the result we want now as you guys remember with Gaussian elimination what we want to do is starting from the bottom left hand corner we want to turn the numbers other than the leading diagonal which is these three numbers down the leading diagonal other than these three numbers we basically want everything else to become zero so we want to start off the bottom left hand side we want this to become zero which it already is so that's great we want this to become zero and then from the middle we want this to become zero from this to become zero and then we want this to become zero and this to become zero now what are the three things that we're allowed to do with Gaussian elimination just to remind you guys we can multiply a whole row by a constant Okay, we can add or subtract add or subtract a whole row 
by another row and we can also move uh, sorry swap positions between rows so we can put row 1 in row 2 and row 2 in row 1 and so on so these are the three things that we can do with Gaussian elimination in order to get the left hand side down to an identity matrix okay so let's get started so here we have row 1 here we have row 2 and here we have row 3 and the first thing I want to do is get row 2 minus row 3 and see what happens so I'm gonna copy down row 1 and row 3 again because oh so uh, usually sorry usually it's row 1 at the top so let me just clarify that usually it's row 1, 2, 3 and I'm going to get row 3 minus uh, sorry row 2 minus row 1 so then I'm gonna copy down row 1 again I'm going to copy row 3 because these two rows I'm not going to change and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get row 2 whatever is in row 2 minus row 1 and I'm going to write the result in row 2 so row 2 minus row 1, 1 minus 1 is 0 2 minus 2 is 0, 1 minus 2 is uh, negative 1 0 minus 1 is negative 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, 0 minus 0 is 0. Okay. Now, we notice that in row 2 we now have two zeros, which means if I swap row 2 and row 3, I will get row 1 doesn't change. Swap row 2 and row 3, so I'm going to write row 2 first and then I'm going to write row 3 now this is closer to our end result right? because we now have three zeros and now what we want to do is we want to change this to a zero and then we want to change this and this to zeros so let's start with row 1 so now we have row 1, row 2, row 3 and I'm gonna go row 1 minus row 2 okay just to see what happens so I'm gonna copy down row 2 and row 3 because I'm not changing them this time okay so row 1 minus row 2 it's 1 0 right because 1 minus 0 is 1 2 minus 2 is 0 2 minus 4 is negative 2 um, one minus zero is one zero minus zero is zero zero minus one is negative one okay now we want to try and get this four down to a zero so I'm going to go um, row two row 2 plus 4 times row 3 okay because this is row 3 this is row 2 and this is row 1 just want to see what happens so then I will get um, let's copy down row 1 because row 1 is not related uh, so row 3 we're not doing anything to it copy it down Okay, so row two times four, row two plus four times row three, so it's still zero. Two minus four times zero is two. Four times four, four plus four times negative one. So four times negative one is negative four. Four plus negative four is zero. Okay, and then um, zero plus four times negative one so that's uh, negative four and then zero 
plus 4, so that's 4, and 1 plus 4 times 0 is 1. Okay, so we've done, we've uh, got another 0 out of this, and the next thing we want is make the negative 2 turn into a 0. So all I have to do is I'm going to go row 1 minus 2 times row 3. Okay, so you'll see why I'm doing that in a second. So let's copy down row 2 and row 3 because we're not changing them. Okay, so row 1 minus 2 times row 3, so row 3 is 0, 1 minus 2 times 0 is 1, 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0, negative 2 minus 2 times negative 1, right, let's write that out, negative 2 minus 2 times negative 1, so that means negative 2 plus 2, which is 0, so now this is 0. Right, this number is now 0, and then 1 minus 2 times negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, 1 minus negative 2 is 1 plus 2, which is 3, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, negative 1 minus 2 times 0 is negative 1. Okay, so we are now up to here, and you can see here that the only difference between um, the left hand side and the identity matrix is we have a 2 in the middle and we have a negative 1 here. So the last thing that is left to do is I'm going to get row 2 divided by 2 and I'm going to get row 3 divided by negative 1. Now because I'm doing this to the whole row it is allowed. Okay, so let's try it. So row 1, I'm keeping the same, so just copy it all down. Row 2, I'm dividing it by 2, so it becomes 0, 1, 0, negative 2, 2, half. And then row 3 divided by negative 1, so I get 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 0. Okay, so now we can separate this back into the original matrices, so I get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 multiplied by the inverse of A will be 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 2, a half, 1, negative 1, 0. So the identity matrix times by anything just gives you that same thing so we can safely say that A inverse is equal to all of this again oops so if you don't believe me what I'm gonna do now is do a quick test in GeoGebra so this is our original matrix, this is our inverse, so theoretically if I put in GeoGebra 1, 2, 2, time, uh, 1, 2, 1, 0, 2, 4, and I multiply by the inverse, I should get the identity matrix. Okay, so let's test it out in GeoGebra and see what happens. So as you can see in, Ge in GeoGebra, I've entered these two matrices and if I type in matrix 1 times matrix 2, I get matrix 3 which is the identity matrix. So it has passed the tests. Alright, because all the matrices are the same. Okay, thanks for watching guys, see you next time.